is round two. In round one, a very affordable knife performed just about as well as the most expensive one. So the question is, can this $5 knife perform just as well as the one that cost almost $400? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see if the $5 knife is just as sharp as the expensive brands. Then we'll see which knives have the strongest blade tips. Then we'll test the strength of the blade locks. We'll see which of the knives offer the most lateral stability. And finally, we'll check out a knife that's still in service after 65 years. At a price of only $4.49, the least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Master USA. Three and a half inch black stainless steel blade, four and a half inches in length, ABS handle with carbon fiber camo. The Master USA is made in China. The Master USA weighs 114 grams. To test the initial sharpness of the knives, I'll be using this best certified knife sharpness tester. The tester came with this chart. A double-edged razor blade is the sharpest between 50 and 75. A utility razor blade is between 150 and 200. New high-end cuttery edges are between 250 and 350. Edges that need maintenance are 400 and up. I'll be using these disposable test clips and we'll replace them between each of the tests. The tester will measure the downward force it takes to cut through the test media. And a Mass USA just isn't very sharp with a sharpness rating of 330. At a price of $8 is this Vulcan Gear brand. Spring Assist Open Folding Knife. The Vulcan Gear has a liner lock. 3.85 inch stainless steel black coated blade. It claims to have a razor sharp edge with excellent performance and sturdiness. The Vulcan Gear is assembled in China. The Vulcan is 36 grams heavier than the Master USA. And the Vulcan is quite a bit sharper than the Master USA at 250. At a very affordable price of only $13 is this King Max brand. Built in flipper ensures quick one handed access. Stainless steel for excellent performance and corrosion resistance. Equipped with a window breaker and a seat belt cutter. Safe, reliable liner lock to prevent unexpected closure. Blade length is 3.3 inches. The King Max is made in China. The King Max weighs 130 grams. And the King Max is the sharpest yet at 245. At a price of $16 is this Coast brand. Thumb studs on both sides for use with either hand. Opens easily with one hand operation. Stainless steel blade. The blade length is right at four inches. Includes a frame lock. The Coast knife is made in China. And the Coast knife is the heaviest yet at 172 grams. The Coast is by far the sharpest knife yet with a score of 190. At a price of $25 is this DeWalt brand. To keep the blade from accidentally deploying, the knife includes a blade lock. Spring assisted opening for added convenience and efficiency. Stainless steel blade for long lasting sharpness. And a graded glass breaker. The DeWalt uses a liner lock. The blade length is 3.187 inches. The DeWalt brand is made in China. The DeWalt is pretty heavy at 142 grams. And the DeWalt is just sharp enough to move into second place behind the Coast brand at 205. Also the price of $25, the same price as the DeWalt, is this Milwaukee brand. Stainless steel drop point blade. In order to open the Milwaukee, you have to push this button in order to release the blade, and it just doesn't have a thumb knob, which makes it very difficult to open with just one hand. The belt clip is reversible. The Milwaukee has a liner lock. The Milwaukee is made in China. And the Milwaukee is 22 grams lighter than the DeWalt. And the Milwaukee moves into the lead with a sharpness of 180. At a price of $40 is this Leatherman Skeletool. Perfect lightweight knife that features high carbon stainless steel blade. The blade is secured by a liner lock. The Skeletool includes both a straight knife as well as a bottle opener. Assembled in U.S. with U.S. and foreign components. And the Leatherman Skeletool is by far the lightest yet at only 38 grams. And the Leatherman Skeletool moves into second position with a sharpness of 180. 85. At a price of $57 is this CRKT brand. Ball bearing pivot deploys the blade smoothly. The knife is secured open with a frame lock. Stainless steel blade. G10 handle provides grip in all conditions. The CRKT is made in China. And the CRKT is the heaviest yet at 174 grams. And the CRKT has a sharpness of 180, the same as the Milwaukee. At a price of $69 is this Kaiser brand. Carbon fiber handle. Drop point blade can better finish everyday carry task. The blade length is 3.42 inches. N690 blade. It claims to have excellent fit and finish with ball bearings and solid liner lock. The Kaiser is made in China. The Kaiser is very light at only 90 grams. And the Kaiser takes the lead from the Milwaukee in the CRKT with a sharpness of 160. At a price of $86 is this Cold Steel Code 4. Three and a half inch blade. The blade steel is S35VN. The Cold Steel knife has a mid lock. The handle is made of aluminum. The Cold Steel is made in Taiwan. Even though the Cold Steel is pretty large, it's still pretty light at 118 grams. And the Cold Steel is sharper than average at 175. At a price of $87 is this Kershaw brand. Wear resistant D2 on the cutting edge. The knife has a hard corrosion resistant N690 steel blade. It also includes a corrosion resistant D2 cutting edge. 
SpeedSafe technology makes this knife quick and easy to open. The blade is secured with a liner lock. The Kershaw is made in USA. The Kershaw is even lighter than the Kaiser at 82 grams. Very nice. And the Kershaw is a little bit sharper than the Cold Steel at 165. Also at a price of $87 is this Victoria Knox Hunter Pro Alox. Stainless steel blade. The Victoria Knox has a mid-lock. Compact, agile, and ready to face any adventure head on. 5.4 inches in length. The Victoria Knox is made in Switzerland. The Victoria Knox is the heaviest yet at 176 grams. The Victoria Knox performed well with a sharpness of 190. At a price of $110 is this Gerber Fastball. Uses a ball bearing system to give a smooth deployment. Made from reliable S30V steel. The blade is held in an open position with a liner lock. The Gerber is made in USA. And the Gerber is just a little bit lighter than the Kershaw at 78 grams. The Gerber isn't nearly as sharp as most of the other brands at 215. At a price of $170 is this Benchmade Griptilian. The Benchmade has an S30V stainless steel blade. Benchmade's axis lock is exceptionally strong and fully ambidextrous. Benchmade claims their handle grips are comfortable to hold and use. The glass filled nylon handle is tough yet attractive. The Benchmade is made in USA. And the Benchmade is pretty light considering its size at 108 grams. And the Benchmade takes the lead from the Kaiser with a sharpness of 155. And the most expensive knife we'll be testing at $364 is made by Falkneven. The Falkneven has 3G knife blade steel. The Falkneven uses a frame lock, is made in Sweden, and the Falkneven is even lighter than the Gerber at 74 grams. And the high dollar knife trails many of the other less expensive knives with a sharpness of 230. If you want a sharp knife right out of the box, the Benchmade has the best sharpness score of 155. However, the much more affordable Kaiser is almost as sharp at 160, Kershaw 165, and Cold Steel 175. If weight is a factor in your purchasing decision, the very light Leatherman is by far the lightest at only 38 grams. The Falkeven is quite a bit larger, but still very light at only 74 grams. Gerber weighs 78, Kershaw 82, and Kaiser 90 grams. Let's see how much pressure it takes to unlock the knife blades. I'll press down on the blade release while the scale will keep track of the downward pressure. And it took 1,316 grams of pressure on the liner lock to release the blade which is very close to 3 pounds of pressure. And it took a lot of pressure to release the Vulcan blade at 2,560 grams which is very close to 6 pounds of pressure. And the King Max takes the least amount of pressure yet to release the blade at only 628 grams. And the Coast takes more than twice the force as the King Max at 1,568 grams. The DeWalt takes a little bit less force than the Coast at 1,392 grams. The Milwaukee released the blade at only 1,076 grams. The Leatherman blade release is a little bit stiffer than the Milwaukee at 1,436 grams. The CRKT performed about the same as the Leatherman at 1,452. The Kaiser is very easy on the fingertips at only 676 grams. And the Cold Steel takes a lot of pressure to release the blade, 3,566 grams or almost 8 pounds. The Kershaw takes even less pressure than the Kaiser at 666 grams. And the Victoria Knox is extremely stiff, just over 15 pounds. And the Gerber performed better than average at 1,078 grams. And the Benchmade is very easy on the fingers at only 356 grams. The Falkeven performed about the same as the Gerber at 1,072 grams. If you're looking for a blade lock that releases under the lightest pressure, the Benchmade came out on top at 356 grams. The very affordable King Max performed well at 628, Kershaw 666, and Kaiser 676 grams. Let's see how smoothly the blades open once again using the scales. Since some of the knives have spring-assisted blades, will start at the midpoint. And the Master USA opened with a very small amount of pressure at only 16 grams. And the Vulcan requires quite a bit more pressure than the Master USA at 78 grams. And the King Max also took very little effort at only 44 grams. Opening the Coast takes more pressure than the first three brands at 88 grams. The DeWalt is about the same as the Coast at 80 grams. And the Milwaukee performed about the same as the Coast and the DeWalt at 84 grams. Only 76 grams for the Compact Leatherman. And the CRKT moves into a tie with the Master USA at only 16 grams. And the Kaiser uses ball bearings at the pivot point and it's very smooth at only 0 grams. Very impressive. And the midlock design of the Cold Steel requires more effort to deploy the blade at 136 grams. And the Kershaw performed about average at 88 grams. The Victoria Knox has a very stiff midlock and it takes a lot of pressure to open the knife at 150 grams. And it only takes 20 grams of pressure to open the Gerber. And the Benchmade is super smooth at 0 grams. And the Falkneven requires 56 grams of pressure. The Kaiser and the Benchmade blades open effortlessly at 0 grams. The Master USA and the CRKT only need 16 grams and the Gerber 20. Let's test the durability of the factory blade edge next using this bamboo cutting board. I'll make 100 back and forth passes with 5 pounds of weight on top of the knife. The Master USA started out at 330 and now it's at 415 so definitely needs sharpened. The Vulcan also lost quite a bit of sharpness from 250 to 375. The King Max performed better than the Vulcan going from 245 to 350. 
The coast started off sharp at 190 and now it's at 265. And the Dewalt did a pretty good job holding an edge going from 205 to 245. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee lost quite a bit of sharpness going from 180 to 295. The Leatherman lost 25 points dropping to 210. The CRKT went from 180 to 215. The Kaiser held up the best yet, only dropping 10 points to 170. And the Cold Steel didn't lose any sharpness and held 175. Very impressive. The Kershaw started out at 165 and must have had a burr on the blade. Now it's at 150. The Victoria Knox only dropped 25 points to 215. And the Gerber only lost 5 points of sharpness, 220. And the Benchmade only gave up 10 points, 165. And the Folk even didn't start off as sharp as most of the other premium knives, but it did hold an edge at 230. So after 100 passes across the bamboo, the Kershaw is now the sharpest knife with a sharpness score of 150. The Benchmade is nearly as sharp at 165, Kaiser 170, Cold Steel 175, and Leatherman 210. I'll go ahead and sharpen all the knives, this time using a 17 degree angle. After forming a burr with the 100 grit diamond stone, I'll make 10 passes with 200 grit. I'll then make 15 passes with 400, 600, and 800 grit. I'll finish with 30 passes with 1,000. I'll avoid sharpening the tip of the knives since I'll be testing blade tip durability next. And the Master USA is now a lot sharper than new at 125. The Vulcan USA has the same sharpness score as the Master USA at 125. And the King Max is the same sharpness as the first two brands at 125. The Coast is now the sharpest knife yet at 120. And the Dwalt is sharper than new at 125. The Milwaukee is tied with the Coast for the sharpest knife with a sharpness score of 120. The Leatherman is now the sharpest knife with a sharpness score of 115. The CRKT is sharper than new at 120. The Kaiser is just as sharp as a CRKT at 120. The Cold Steel is sharper than average with a sharpness score of 115. And the Kershaw is very sharp with a sharpness score of 110. And the Victoria Knox is sharp as most of the other brands at 120. And the Gerber is tied with the Kershaw with a sharpness score of 110. The Benchmade is just as sharp as a Gerber with a sharpness score of 110. And the Falk even is the sharpest knife yet at 105. So all the knives have been sharpened at 17 degrees and are very close to the same sharpness. Very sharp blades are very susceptible to blade edge roll and damage. So let's go ahead and make 100 more passes over the bamboo cutting board and see which knives maintain a sharp edge the best. And the Master USA lost 135 sharpness points but is still sharper than new at 260. The Vulcan performed a little bit worse than the Master USA, losing 150 sharpness points, 275. The King Max just might be the king of the cheap knives, only losing 35 points and is sharper than new at 160. The Coast performed about as good as the King Max, only losing 45 sharpness points at 165. And the Bamboo really dulled the DeWalt, losing 120 sharpness points, 245. And the Milwaukee dulled even more than the DeWalt, losing 150 sharpness points, 270. And the Leatherman moves into the lead only losing 15 points and is sharper than new at 130. Very impressive. And the CRKT performed a little bit better than average losing 100 points with a sharpness score of 220. And the Kaiser only lost 10 sharpness points and is now just as sharp as the Leatherman at 130. The Cold Steel performed very well only losing 20 sharpness points, 135. And the Kershaw only lost 10 points and is now the sharpest knife at 120. The Victoria Knox held an edge very well losing 10 points, 130. And the Gerber lost 35 sharpness points for a score of 145. And the Benjamin is tied for the sharpest knife, only losing 10 points, 120. And the very expensive Falk even only lost 10 points and is now the sharpest knife at 115. After sharpening the knives and making 100 passes across the bamboo, the Falk even is now the sharpest at 115. However, the Kershaw and the Benchmade are almost as sharp at 120, Leatherman, Kaiser, and Victorinox, 130. Another way of comparing blade edge retention is to consider the percentage of sharpness loss. And the knives that are made with premium knife blade steel performed a lot better than the less expensive knives which use stainless steel. Dollar for dollar, the Kaiser, the Victorinox, and the Kershaw held their own against the more expensive Benchmade and Falk even knives. I'll be dropping each of the knives from 48 inches through a pipe just to make sure the knives stay straight. And the impact caused the Master USA blade lock to release the blade. However, the blade tip did experience minor damage, but it did not bend or break off. And the Vulcan experienced a direct blow to the blade tip and held up about the same as the Master USA with only minor damage. The King Max is heavier than average at 130 grams, but the tip held up better than the Master USA in the Vulcan. The Coast is heavier than the first three brands, and the impact caused the blade tip to bend. And the DeWalt held up really well with just a small amount of damage to the blade tip. And the Milwaukee is a little bit lighter than the DeWalt, but there's a little bit more damage to the blade tip. And the Leatherman is really light at only 38 grams. And the blade tip held up extremely well. Even though the CRKT is very heavy, the blade tip proved to be very durable. 
And the Kaiser is very light at only 90 grams, which seems to have helped. The blade tip held up very well. The cold steel blade is made of S35 VN steel, and it held up really well. The Kershaw was doing extremely well in the showdown until this test. Unfortunately, the blade tip appears to be very brittle, and you can see it break off during the impact. And the Victoria Knox is the heaviest knife in the showdown at 176 grams. The blade tip experienced a little bit more damage than the Kaiser in the cold steel. The Gerber is very light at 78 grams. And the blade tip held up really well with a very small amount of damage. The Benchmade is pretty light at only 108 grams, and the tip of the blade still looks nearly as good as new. The Falk even is very light at only 74 grams and uses 3G blade steel, and the blade tip still looks as good as new. Assessing blade tip damage is highly subjective. However, other than the Kershaw, the knives that are made with premium blade steel and the knives that are a little bit lighter than average performed better. After the last test, a lot of viewers requested a lateral blade strength test. With a 6 inch space from the tip to the handle, I'll place 25 pounds on the center of the knife. Even though the Master USA did not break, there's a lot of slop and a lot of movement at the pivot point on the handle. There's a pretty large gap between the blade and the handle, allowing for a lot of lateral movement. And the Vulcan is a pretty large knife, but it has a lot of slop and a lot of movement at the pivot point on the handle, just like the Master USA. And the King Max seems to be offering better blade stability compared to the Master USA in the Vulcan. Compared to the first three brands, there's a big difference compared to the Coast. And the Coast is performing a lot better with a lot less lateral movement. And the DeWalt has a little bit more movement at the pivot point compared to the Coast. And the Milwaukee performed about the same as the DeWalt. While it did fairly well, the Coast performed better. The Leatherman is very light at 38 grams, but is performing just as well as the much heavier Coast knife. And the CRKT offers great lateral strength and stability. And there's no visible slop or play with the Kaiser. And the cold steel offers tremendous blade strength and lateral stability for a folding knife. Very impressive. And the Kershaw is a very light knife with great lateral blade stability. And the Victoria Knox seems just about as impressive as the cold steel when it comes to blade strength and stability. And the Gerber is performing just as good as the Kaiser and the Kershaw on this test. The Benchmade seems to offer a little bit more blade strength and stability compared to the Gerber. And the Falk even performed very well considering its light weight at only 74 grams. Assessing lateral blade stability is highly subjective, but most of the knives perform fairly well in this test. While none of the budget knives experience failure at the pivot point, several of the brands really struggled with quite a bit of lateral movement. A blade lock is an important safety feature, and blade locks should be able to easily handle 25 pounds of force without damaging the knife. To test this, I'll secure each of the knives in a holder and will apply a downward force on the end of the knife blade. And the Master USA handled the 25 pounds of weight, but there's quite a bit of sag with the knife blade. However, during the blade tip durability test, the Master USA did experience a blade lock release. Unfortunately, the Milwaukee was the only brand that didn't survive this test. Even though the blade lock release did let go, it did not cause any damage to the lantern lock. Hey, hey, Mr. Smith, how you doing? Crazy dog. <laughs> so you have an everyday care that you've been using since how old? Oh, I think I was about 10 or 12. So you've had it for about how many years? 65, 70, something. 65 to 70 years, yes. the same exact knife. Mm -hmm. So what brand is this? That's a Case, Case Canoe. It's kind of pocket worn, but... Yeah, but still, that is amazing to have a knife in your pocket for 65 <laughs> years. That's amazing. I would have lost that thing probably once a year. <laughs> oh, that's my price possession. I, I bet I reach for that thing a dozen times a day. How do you sharpen it? Just a uh, stone. Any advice for someone regarding how to pick out an everyday carry? I am not a good judge in that because I've only had one knife. If I were to go buy one, I'd probably look for something just like that. Okay, perfect. That, uh, Makes sense. So you used to serve in the military, correct? Yes, sir. What did you do? I was in the uh, Special Operations, Special Forces. Special Forces? Green, Green Beret. Well, yes, thank sir. you for your service. Oh, you're welcome. How many jumps did you make with it? 350. 350 jumps. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for your time. I always enjoy talking to you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm glad to do it, Todd. So which knife is the best? The Benchmade came out on top with an average finish of 1.8, but it is very expensive. The Kaiser and the Kershaw also perform very well, but the Kershaw's blade tip just might not survive a drop. So if you're looking for a really cheap knife, why not just go with the King Max? It performed very well for a knife under $20. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.